just now bringing some of my plants outside and one of the questions I see asked a lot or one of the things I know people fear because many years ago I feared it myself is trimming your fruit trees, pruning your fruit trees, cutting your fruit trees back. Everybody always thinks that that's going to hurt them. And what I wanted to show you is um, I just brought out my key lime and my Meyer lemon. And the things that I want to show you are, if you look right here, you can see that this limb has broken. This used to be pretty close to four feet tall. And it was really bushy as far as circular bushy. And what happened was a cat got in there and snapped the top main branch out. Now, last year, these limbs were barely even limbs at all. But you can see now that it's come back, and it not only come back, it's come back extremely vigorous. Look at all the blooms on this. And we're only in the like middle of April right now. So, that's one example. This example here kind of a similar situation where what happened was um, so I one of the things I got to explain is also for two years basically my orchard my fruit trees they didn't really get much maintenance and because I've been fighting cancer for the last two years so now I'm feeling better and kind of feeling more like myself it was time to get these uh, back in order so this this right here had gotten so tall that the limbs folded over and they were actually growing toward the ground and i was like that that's not going to work i'm fine with it being bushy but i don't want the fruit to be dragging the ground right um, so what i did i come up and i cut every limb off right with the edge of the container that they're in and you can actually see the new growth you can you can tell it plain as day see this light green here's the dark green that just grew back in about the last about the last four to six weeks and anywhere you see there's new growth it's you can tell it plain as day and not only that it's also starting to bloom there's some new growth there too you can see the difference in the colors the light green the dark green but um, it's also starting to fr uh, bloom see a few blooms down here so that's kind of like one of the things and this right here is another example this is a fig tree and uh, I've probably always tried to keep it about about as tall as I am so after it fruits this year I'll cut these limbs way back it doesn't hurt it one bit. It actually lost its, uh, this year it had its, uh, the first blooms because of the up and down temperature we were having here in Kentucky. It actually lost its first bloom. So I can't remember the name of those right now. But, you know, it always grows blooms on its second year wood. So it, you can kind of tell the first year wood is green, second year wood is brown. First year wood's green, second's brown. It's literally done all this growth in the last four to six weeks. All that green that you see is in the last four to six weeks. And I keep this trimmed about the height that they're at right now pretty much year round. You can actually see if you go down through this branch, you can see all the times that I've cut this branch off and it just keeps right on growing. It, it don't care. So now let me go show you a really drastic example. All right, so now on to the extreme examples. Um, you can see a bunch of trees that are here that are maybe three foot tall. That one, that one's even smaller. That's more like two foot tall. That one's about three foot tall. And then this one is about 12 foot tall. Now, normally my plum trees, I would keep at about eight to 10 feet, sometimes even down to six. So what happened after not taking care of them for two years, they grew really tall. 
I haven't gotten a chance to get to them. Last year, while I was still going through cancer recovery, though, the deer got in here and broke the tops out of all of these. And I've got videos to kind of show you. You can actually see I never finished cleaning the tops out. So I basically had to come in here and cut sometimes 10 or 12, 10, 10 to 12 feet of height off of these. And look, they're coming back just plain as day. Literally, these trees were just as tall as this tree. There's probably, uh, you know, there's probably 10, maybe 12 foot of difference. So the only reason why I didn't do the third or the fourth tree that's over here is um, I, I got a little anxious and I was like, uh, because generally places will tell you that you shouldn't cut off more than 30% of a tree. But these trees, I was cutting off more than half, more than 50%. And I, I was a little worried that, you know, that if I did all four of them, I'd lose all four of them. But you know what? Every one of them is thriving for this time of year. Even this one. But what's going to happen is, is in the fall or actually in the winter, I'll have to cut this one back to match the height of these other ones. And you can actually see the tops that I've cut because I basically cut them and just left them lay on the ground. I need to come out here and clean this up. And I had similar things happen back here. This tree right here was probably as tall as this pear tree. Let me go over and show you. And look, I had to cut half of it off. Same way with that one. Same way with this one. They've all got green on them. They're all coming back. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is when you do prune your trees, even if you prune just a little bit, and let me show you what I mean. Find a good, well, actually, let me show you another drastic example. Right here are some peach trees. This tree, to be honest with you, is, I had planted it last year. It's kind of getting a slow start. It's not really taking off too much. But this red right here that you see on these branches, that's what's grown since last year when it was planted. It ain't grown very fast. Now you take this peach tree, it's massive in size. There's actually two limbs coming out of there, but you can see where I cut off two limbs just as big as they were, and plus a third one right there in the center, because it was basically crowding out all my other trees. I did the same thing over here. This tree, also massive, it's, they're, these are probably closer to 15 or 16 feet tall. And I never intended to let them get that big. It's just peach trees will grow really, really fast when they're thriving. As far as like vertical height. And again, for two years, I couldn't trim them. And look, I cut them off. And you can actually see that they're trying to grow down here where even where I cut them off. And all the way up these limbs. So when I go in the fall and cut these way back... Next year, I'm going to have fruit because, look, it's got all these sprouts started on both of these. Same way here, look. See the green? This is all the way down, just a couple inches off the ground. Where I cut those off, there is new limbs growing. So when I cut these back, they'll fruit next year. Now, the reason why I didn't cut them all the way back, I like peaches, and I did want to get a peach harvest this year. I could have cut them back all the way and been fine. And actually, look here. This is actually funny. There is a sucker of this plant growing two and a half feet away from it. So let me tell you something about when you prune your trees. You are putting, the, you think that you're hurting the trees. And what you're doing is you're telling them they need to really, really grow a lot. Like, like they think that the world is ending for them. So they put a whole lot of growth into survival. And that's why that when you prune your trees, even if you just prune a little bit, that the next year your growth and your harvest is always way more vigorous as far as like volume. 
And let me give you an example. Um, let me see if I can find a better example over here where the apples are at. So, let's say that this is your apple tree. And this apple tree is, this will be his, um, I planted this two years ago and I've already had to cut the tops out of it. So, this year, in the winter, this limb right here, which is only about maybe two feet off the ground, is, and it's only about maybe two feet in length. But if it doesn't grow any more, or even if it grows more, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut this about right here. I'm only going to cut just a little bit off the ends. Now where I cut that at, that's going to force this to send out branches on the sides, kind of in a Y shape. And then they will take off and grow next year. But you've got to be careful with some fruit trees, especially apples being one, because apples on the tips of their branches, and let me see if I've got any here that aren't butted out yet. Won't be on this smaller tree, but on this bigger one there should be some. On the very tips of an apple tree, you get what's called a king bud. Here's one, but it's already got, it's already started to, to uh, leaf out. I'm pretty certain they're all leafed out now. Uh, you can kind of see it from the side here. So let me see if I can get this where you can see. So you can kind of see that there's a great big bud on the end of that limb. When that king bud blooms, there will be five flowers right here. That's, that's called your king bud cluster. So you have to be careful about how you prune your fruit trees. Here's another example right here. You see all these little, they look like little limbs. Those are not actually limbs. Those are fruiting spurs. You never want to cut a limb off that's got those. They look like just little stubs of a limb in the, in the winter time. And then in the summertime, when they start growing, they produce blooms. And that's where all your fruit comes from. Now, if you look at this limb, how all the leaves are kind of growing upward and toward the side of the branch and not growing out like these. See the difference? How those are growing outward? These are growing kind of like along the limb or kind of parallel to the limb. Those are growing outward from the limb. These are your leaf um, buds. They don't produce flowers. You could trim this limb off anywhere along its length. Except for down here, we're starting to get into some fruiting spurs. See how that changes right there? See how that limb's sticking out? That limb, the, all them little limbs down there? Then you get up here, they go vertical. Now, if I cut this off, actually that's not a, uh, I thought for a minute that was a, uh, on the end I thought that was a uh, king bud, but it's not. Um, pear trees also get a king bud. There's a king bud right there. That hasn't flowered out yet. And I know it's hard to see because of the lighting and because of my shakiness. But it's getting ready to start soon. It'll flower out. That will be five fruits if it gets pollinated. So you have to really know about your fruit trees. They're not just a plant it and forget it type thing. You have to know like, see, here's another example. Let's see if I can get where you can see these lights. Um, if I stand on this side, you'll probably be able to see. So that right there. You can kind of see these branches that are coming out and they're really short. That is your, uh, that's your bud spurs. And then as I go up, there's another bud spur there. But then we change in to leaf uh, growth right here. And all the way up, that will be leaf. Until next year, or maybe the year after, if I don't chop this off. Because I uh, do try to keep my apple trees kind of trimmed back too. So what I do is I cut a lot of this new growth off. I'll cut, if this don't grow anymore, and this is a foot long, and right there's my last uh, bud spur, and right here, my two leaf spurs, I'm probably gonna cut it like right there, right above the two leaf spurs. 
so that way that forms branches that come out now this right here is an example of that this right here at some time i probably cut it off back here Let's see if i can figure out where it was at actually it looks like it was right there but anyways it grew out some and then got a side limb and every fruit tree is different so i'm telling you about apples now apples and pears are very similar um cherry trees and peaches i wait until after they bloom like you can kind of tell all these blooms right here uh where's my see how you got all these blooms right here and then you got this long piece right here i can trim that now and just cut it off right there there's no blooms on this end of this limb there's no sense in keeping it same thing with this limb this one up here has blooms all the way to the end where this one doesn't. So I could cut this off anywhere back here where these blooms are at. There's no sense in keeping growth if it's not going to produce fruit. So that's how I do peach trees. I actually wait until they're in bloom and then I decide where I'm going to cut. Apple trees, I kind of go by where my bud spurs are at. You know, you can, they're kind of obvious. I've showed you. And cherry trees, I kind of also wait until they bloom which they're not even close to it yet. We're just in the middle of April. But it won't be long. So when these bloom, this is one of my cherry trees, when this blooms, there'll be flowers all over the place and then there'll be like the tips of the branches won't have flowers on them. You can kind of tell there's gonna be flowers like right there. There's gonna be flowers right there and maybe one right there but then once you get up here there's not any flowers so you wait until those flowers form and then you know where to trim your cherry trees let's see did i go over any others i showed you the apples the peach the cherries i didn't really show you the plums because they they bloomed several weeks ago that tall one bloomed like first day it got above 50 degrees and uh, I have other fruit trees on the property, but I don't want to tie us up. Really, the whole point was don't be afraid to trim your fruit trees because the more you trim them, the better they grow, the more fruit they produce. And that you can ask anybody that raises fruit trees, they'll all tell you the same thing. You, you prune your fruit trees at the right time in the right way and you will have a huge harvest also let me tell you something else while we're on this topic another misconception is now this is a dwarf tree right here that we're looking at that i'm pointing at that's a dwarf tree but i could take this dwarf tree and i could plant a semi-dwarf there actually this right here is a semi-dwarf which is how it got so tall but i keep them trimmed down and pruned down to the size of a of a dwarf tree i could plant a full-size fruit tree in here and as long as i keep pruning it it'll never get taller than a than a dwarf tree now let me tell you something else a lot of people think that a taller tree makes more fruit and that's not true there's a lot of youtube videos that can show you that i'm correct you don't have to believe me if you don't want just go search for it there's, um, I don't remember where that guy's at or what his YouTube channel is. If I can remember it, I'll link it in the description. There's this one guy. He has a commercial apple orchard. His tallest fruit trees are about this tall. So maybe three feet tall. And every one of his apple trees probably produces 15, 25 apples on it every year. Now, if you have a semi-dwarf tree and it's 10 feet tall, so let me go back to this other thing if there's 25 fruits on this little tree how hard do you think they are to pick i can walk up and pick them just standing here but now if you put 25 apples way up there 10 or 12 14 15 feet in the air how hard are they to pick one you're gonna to have to drag a ladder out two you're gonna to have to take safety in mind because you could fall off the ladder and hurt yourself and three there's just going to be some that your arms can't reach you're not going to get all the fruit that's on that bigger tree. They don't necessarily produce more fruit, but they do make it harder for you to pick. 
Now, if you have an apple tree that's 40 feet tall and the limb structure on it's good, you could do like I did when I was a kid. I used to climb up in them full-size apple trees, get up there, have some of my friends on the ground holding, uh, you know, three or four buddies on the ground holding a sheet, and I'd get up there and I'd shake them limbs and knock them apples out. And uh, we would get apples by, you know, 30, 40 a day, every day for while they were on the trees. But then you look at what's on the ground of a full-size tree, and what you picked didn't even put a dent in that tree. There was hundreds of fruit still on the ground. So the other difference is, too, these dwarf trees will start producing usually their fourth to fifth year. Most of the varieties I planted have been their fourth and fifth year. Um, the only ones that haven't have been my pawpaws. They are now on their sixth year. And pawpaws are notorious for taking about eight years before they will produce fruit. So it's not like I'm in a hurry. I know I'm still within that time. But a semi-dwarf tree takes longer than what a dwarf tree takes. And also a full-size tree takes 10 plus years before they'll produce fruit. So when you go to these dwarf trees, you're saving space, you're making it easier and safer for you to pick the fruit off of, and you're making it so that you get fruit quicker. So one thing I've never been is one of these FUD YouTube channels where I preach fear, uncertainty, doubt by, you know, because of the economy, because of the war. I ain't gonna be one of those people. But if you're worried about your food sources, you need to go to dwarf trees. And I'll just leave it at that. You can do the research on your own. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I'm always very receptive to questions. I try to help everybody else out. And uh, I try to do it very quickly. So usually within, you know, unless I'm asleep, I probably reply back within an hour of any comment that I get. So uh, as always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.